Hello, I'm Nick from Income Digs, and welcome to this video tutorial where it is our goal to show you exactly how we use different tools to execute various business processes within the world of real estate investing. Today's video will focus on purchasing a property and the associated journal entry that you need to make to your accounting books. So it's a concept that is relatively simple, but if you're not familiar with accounting or if you're just getting started, it can be a bit daunting. So we're gonna talk through it today with a very simple example, and we'll use that example to build off of for future videos to show you more real world example. So we're gonna dive right in. Uh, looking over here at our closing statement here. This is a sample closing statement, hypothetical deal. For those of you who have purchased property before, you'll notice that this is a lot simpler than most closing statements look, but it should help us to communicate the concepts appropriately. So we can see here I'm buying the property 123 Main Street in Buffalo, New York with my company Income Digs. So looking at the details, what I owe to the seller, the credits to the seller, I'm purchasing this property for $100,000. I also owe the seller some taxes. I owe $400 for county taxes and $1,350 for school taxes. And what this is, is a prorated amount based on the part of the year that the owner will not be owning the property. So we're assuming that they've already paid their taxes ahead of time, but there's a certain amount of time during the year that they won't own the property. And so we are responsible for that. So the seller's attorney will often do that calculation and add it to the closing statement. So the total that I owe to the seller is 101750 Credits to me, the purchaser, are currently at zero. Now you'd see a number here if I had put a deposit down on the property, I would want to get that credited to me at the closing table. Again, to keep things simple, we kept that at zero. So now we look at the total to seller, do a closing, is still at 101750 We also need to add in some other costs for closing. So we have some recording fees, title insurance, survey in my buyer's attorney fee. So these four fees, I would write that check to my attorney, they would be handling all of that. So those get added to the 101750 to leave me with 103449 total due at closing. So that's the amount that I would need to come out of my checking account to close on the deal. Now again, we're assuming that this is a cash deal, so no financing involved at all to keep things simple. If there's financing involved, this gets a lot more complicated. The fees go up quite a bit, and you'll see a lot more in terms of who gets funds here and there and, and how the loan flows through. But again, let's assume cash deal to keep it simple. So that is the data that we're gonna use for our journal entry. If we move over here to our income digs balance sheet, we see a very, very, very basic balance sheet. I have $150,000 in checking, and that is um, directly associated with my owner's equity. So I put that journal entry in because I'm gonna need cash to purchase this property, so I need to start somewhere. So we're gonna go ahead and create the journal entry. So again, I'm using QuickBooks Online. I'm gonna click Create Journal Entry. If you're using some other kind of accounting software, this process will be very similar. I love QuickBooks Online. I think it is the best accounting software out there, but if you're using something else, um, this should be very similar. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these different columns here, quick overview. The account is obviously the account that relates to your chart of account. So this will go back to your balance sheet. Your debits and credits, that's the essential part of a journal entry, we'll be using those. The description helps us uh, to add some commentary to each line item here to help describe what it is. The name column can be used to show who you're paying money to or from. Uh, you can use this as potentially like a vendor column, um, and this can help you to pull reports um, by vendor potentially. The business and the class columns are something that you may or may not have depending on the QuickBooks product you use. Um, just very briefly, I use the business column, and it's also called location tracking uh, because I have multiple real estate holding companies. So this allows me to track my balance sheets, my profit and losses by company as long as I consistently make sure that every transaction I put in has a tagged business. Another example outside of real estate would be restaurants with multiple locations. They want to be able to track their accounts by each location, and this would allow them to do that. The class column is very similar. Uh, I use the class column as a project column, and my project happens to always be a property address. So um, again, this allows an, an additional functionality when it comes to reporting. I can pull P&L statements, I can pull cash flow statements by property, 
and that I see as an essential part of my business. Now, if you're just starting out or if you only have one property, you don't have multiple businesses, these columns might not be that useful for you and we can ignore them. So um, with that overview complete, let's go ahead and start with our first account. Now, I'm going to be purchasing a property. It, it will be a building, it will be a fixed asset. I don't have the account set up in my chart of accounts yet. As I start typing in 123 Main Street, you'll notice that QuickBooks can't find it, but it does give me the option to add it, which I'm going to do. So I click Add. Category Type, I'm going to scroll down to Fixed Asset. The Detail Type, I'm going to put Buildings. And I'm going to leave the rest of this blank. I don't need a description for this. I'm not going to make it a sub account. And for this uh, video, we're not going to track depreciation. Now, I typically do track depreciation. You probably should too if you have rental properties, but to keep things simple, we'll leave that blank for now. Save and close. So I've created the account and I'm going to use that account. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to debit the 123 Main Street account $100,000. I'm purchasing it for $100,000. I need my books to reflect that purchase price. Description, purchase of 123 Main Street. I'm going to leave the name field blank for now. Next account is going to be my checking account. So we, we talked over on the closing statement that I need to come to the table with 103449. I need all of that to come out of my checking account. So I'm gonna start typing and it pulls up income digs checking, click that. And it's not 100,000, it's 103,449. That's how much I'm going to need to come to the, the closing table with. So now my debits are 100,000, my credits are 103,449. These do not equal. So a very basic fundamental of um, accounting is that when you make a journal entry, your debits and your credits must equal each other. And this helps you to keep your balance sheet in balance. Um, QuickBooks won't let me save this without having these two things equal. So if I scroll over here and click save, you'll see that it won't let me do it. The following error has occurred, please balance debits and credits. This is a nice check that they have in place um, because it's impossible to make a journal entry without these two things being equal. Okay, so I need to make up that difference, that 3,449, and it will be made up by all of these other costs on the closing statement. So I'm going to start entering those as well. Now those are expenses. So I'm going to debit those, and these will help me to balance out my accounts. So I'm going to start by putting in the amounts and the descriptions. As I do that, um, I'll put in 400 here for county tax. Now you'll notice I put in county tax in the description. I'm going to use the same exact verbiage in my journal entry as appears on the closing statement. This helps me to um, ensure that everything is exactly equal. If in a couple years I want to look back at this journal entry and understand where things came from, um, these things matching will really help me, obviously. According fees, title insurance, 450 for the survey. Okay. So that, those are in there. Now I'm gonna to have to go to my accounts and add those now, uh, next. You'll notice though that my debits and credits are now equal. 103,449, 103,449. This journal entry is almost ready to go. I'll fill in these accounts here. These are expenses. So I have a few different accounts to track expenses. Um, I have one for property tax. I recommend you do, you do as well. Okay, recording fees, I call these professional services. I like to differentiate these a bit from my um, legal fees. So I have two categories, I have professional services and then I have legal. Okay, so those are done. All right, I'm just gonna expand this a bit. So I'm pretty much ready to go. I can click save and QuickBooks will save this. Now I will add a couple names here. So for property tax, we pay that to City of Buffalo. Just want to show you how that works. And again, we would use this if we wanted to pull reports by vendor, if we wanted to see how much we're spending on vendors. I use this for rehab projects quite a bit. I can filter my expenses on vendors. So Lowe's, Home Depot, our kitchen store, things like that. And that allows me to see how much I'm spending by vendor. And I can use that as a negotiating tactic potentially on pricing, things like that. 
I am going to fill in um, business just because the balance sheet we're showing happens to be an income dig specific balance sheet. Um, and I want to be able to demonstrate that. So I'm just going to copy and paste these down. I will leave class blank. Um, I don't need it for this example. But one thing you'll notice as I finish up here, I'll click save and close. QuickBooks will prompt me that I did not fill in the class fields. Are you sure you want to save this transaction? I want to say yes, but this is obviously a nice feature. I have it set on my um, preferences to prompt me anytime I don't fill in the class field. I want to make sure I'm consistently adding those things. So this brings us to our balance sheet. You'll see that our checking account is at 46,551, a lot less than it used to be, and that's because I used a lot of my cash to purchase the property. Where's the property? It shows up under the fixed asset account, $100,000. Perfect. My total assets are 146,551. This matches up with my equity. I have $150,000. That's when I put in that money into the checking account. But my net income is negative 3449. Those are all my closing accounts closing costs. So this makes complete sense. My liabilities and equity equal my assets and we're good to go. So that concludes this video tutorial. In the tutorials to come, we're going to expand upon this example. We're going to add in um, some financing. We're going to add in some escrow accounts and we might even dabble with some credits for rent and for security deposits as well. In the meantime, please leave your comments or questions uh, below and be sure to check out all of the resources available at IncomeDigs.com. Thanks for watching.